like a Formula One car built for the road. Imagine what the oil in its engine must go through. Pressures on the bearings rise to four tons. That's why Ferrari trust an oil developed in Formula One, just like the car. Shell Helix Ultra. Kyle Army and main event action from round six of Total Super Series 97. In the junior motorbikes, Wild Ulse takes the lead after winning the second qualifying heat and coming third in heat one. He'd like to make it two in a row, but the Honda rider is closely followed by Gareth Swanepoel on his Elmer Fox Kawasaki, who suffered his only defeat this year in the second heat when he failed to finish. Third is Neville Bradshaw on his Suzuki. up the hill for the first time in this race, and the first four riders are pulling away from the rest of the field. It's Alce, Swanepoel, Bradshaw, and Lawrence Mahoney on another Honda. Swanepoel, in second position, has won the first 16 races of the season in a row, but had to retire from the previous heats due to mechanical problems. Now he has to make amends, and determined youngster that he is, Swanepoel is visibly closer to Alce in the lead. Alce beat off a determined challenge to win his first race in Heat 2 and is not about to relinquish his lead. It's becoming a two-horse battle as Neville Bradshaw is starting to fall back. Swanepoel's not used to chasing from behind, preferring to open up a comfortable cushion in the lead, but he has his work cut out to catch the only other race winner of the season. Swanepoel closing in, but Alce takes a defensive line through the tricky left-hander at the bottom of the circuit. This is the hardest battle for the lead all season. Alce isn't used to leading a race and he's worried about where Swanepoel is, but the Honda rider seems to be getting more speed out of the left-hander and pulls away on the uphill. Third is still Neville Bradshaw on his Suzuki. Lap five and still this battle rages on. Alce and Swanepoel well clear of the rest of the field. Oh, and Alce gets his rear wheel to step out and Swanepoel pounces like a tiger. This is just what the champion elect has been waiting for. Alce tries to defend the line at the bottom, but Swanepoel goes round on the outside. A new leader as Swanepoel accelerates out of the left-hander and pulls a gap on Alce. Just a little peek over his shoulder to see where Alce is, and the former world minicross champion sees that his ploy of applying maximum pressure to force a mistake has worked. But Alce has the power and simply accelerates past to take the lead again. Now the back markers are starting to loom. Has Swanepoel played his hand too early? Alce will be very wary of falling for the same trick again, and Swanepoel will have to work out a different ploy. Alce takes the inside line, but Swanepoel tries on the outside. A nice blocking maneuver there by Alce on his Honda. He holds the inside line, but goes a little wide. Oh, and another mistake by Alce as his front wheel digs in, allowing Swanepoel to take the lead again. Great racing skills by both riders. Swanepoel on his Elmer Fox Kawasaki now has a slight advantage, but he'll have to make sure that he doesn't lose his lead to the superior acceleration of Alce on his Honda. But in the end, Swanepoel succeeds in pulling a gap and wins his 17th race of the season. Alce finishes second, but wins overall for the day due to his consistent top three finishes. Swanepoel only finishes 11th overall, following his duck in the second heat. Well done, Gareth. Another hard race for you? Yeah, it was very hard. I got a right start this time, but I was very sore from my tumble in the second heat, and I went off. It seemed like you chose your moment exactly right to uh, get past the leader. Yeah, I got past once, I think three times, and he passed me back. But once I got past him, I pulled away. To the four-wheelers now, and the Pro Quad qualifying heat saw some strange results. Brandon Martin won heat one, with pre-race favourite Jacques Struig bailing out due to mechanical problems, and championship leader Christo Fanamarva second. Heat two saw Struig winning, with Martin second and Fanamarva fourth. Who would take the main event and the overall victory for the day?
Well, 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 it's Peter Breckel on his Yamaha Banshee, leading from Brandon Martin on another Banshee and Jacques Struig on a Suzuki. Christo van Amaver on his Johannesburg Yamaha Banshee has had a bad start and is only sixth. Breckel, Martin and Struig on the Jojo Tanks machine in the battle for the lead, with the rest of the field storming through. Quad racing has taken off in a big way in South Africa, and it's not difficult to see why. Sideways there by Martin, and that allows Struig to close in. Mark Breckel, also on a Yamaha Banshee, is joining the party in fourth. Christo van Amaver is still trying to make up for his poor start in sixth. Back to the leaders and Peter Breckel, who was third in both qualifying heats, is under pressure from both Martin and Struig. Struig tries to muscle his way past through the chicane, but loses out. Up the hill and oh, Martin gets it wrong. He does well to keep his quad under control, but that's cost him his second position. Now watch Jacques Struig. Peter Breckel into the stadium section. Nice control, but Struig is chasing and Martin is back. Breckel should be pulling a gap as Martin attacks Struig, who has to defend his position. Mark Breckel seems to have a flat right rear tyre. Struig and Martin neck and neck into the tight right-hander and the twisty part of the circuit, where it's oh so easy to make a mistake. Now they're covered by the proverbial blanket and Breckel hasn't taken advantage of the battle behind him. Struig attacks on the downhill, trying to force Peter Breckel into a mistake. But Breckel's been around the block a few times and isn't falling for it. Those two seem to have dropped Martin and are now fighting tooth and nail for the lead. Spectacular racing. Up the hill once again and Peter Breckel is a worried man. Martin has indeed dropped back a little bit and Mark Breckel is still in fourth. David Parkinson is in sixth, ahead of Christo van Amava. Into the stadium section and a flat-out left-hander in front of the main grandstand. Struig goes in faster but has to take a wider line. Martin's not out of the picture yet. Struig tries every conceivable line around the corners, but going wide only loses you time. Peter Breckel is pulling a gap. Into the twisties again, and this is the opportunity to close up. A slight mistake by Breckel, but Struig also can't get enough drive out of the corner. Martin's closed in as well. This is great racing as each rider tries to attack the man in front while defending his position from the man behind. South Africa's quad racers are ranked amongst the top in the world, and this is exactly why. Oh, and Struig is in the lead. Breckel must have made a mistake. The continuous pressure taking its toll. And now Martin's also attacking Breckel for second position. It's Struig on his Suzuki, and Martin's in second place. The two Yamaha Banshee riders trading places on the uphill. The crowd loves the action, and as Struig and Martin pull away, a battle for fourth is developed between Peter Breckel and Christo van Amaver on the Johannesburg Yamaha Banshee. David Parkinson is also in the picture. Breckel has had two third places already, and his third one is in grave danger. Wide he goes, and Van Amava gets past. Breckel takes the defensive line into the tight right-hander. Oh, and a bit of bumping and barging there. This is hard racing, and these are hard men. Championship leader Christo Van Amava in third, Paul Breckel in fourth, and David Parkinson holding on to fifth. Breckel goes a little wide into the fast and slippery left-hander at the bottom of the circuit. There's Parkinson, and he goes through on the inside. Coming up to one of the back markers, but things settled down, and Struig won from Martin and Van Amarva, with Breckel finishing ahead of Parkinson. Martin took overall honours. <laughs> Ik heb het niet klaar gemaakt, ik zal maar kijken hoe je bent, maar ik zie dat het ook niet een goede dag had, dus ik voel niet wel slecht. Het lijkt me een van je problemen is jouw begin, je wegspraak. In je andere klas ja, maar in die klas is het moeilijk een goede wegspraak. 